It was a time of revolution and change, and Muammar Gaddafi was at the helm, leading Libya with an iron fist. For over four decades, he ruled the country, bringing prosperity to some and oppression to others. But how did a leader who was once hailed as a revolutionary end up being overthrown by his own people? To understand that, we need to take a journey through the history of Libya and explore the rise and fall of Gaddafi's regime. From the early years, where he was seen as a hero who had freed the country from foreign influence, to the later years, where his regime was marred by corruption, human rights abuses, and economic mismanagement. We'll delve into the economic policies that left many Libyans struggling to make ends meet, the political repression that silenced any opposition, and the foreign interventions that destabilized the country. But it's not just about Gaddafi, it's about the people of Libya who fought for freedom and democracy in the face of oppression. Join us as we explore the complex history of Libya and uncover the reasons why Gaddafi's own people turned against him. Muammar Muhammad Abu Minyar al-Gaddafi, also known as Colonel Gaddafi, was born in a small desert town in 1942 and grew up in a Bedouin tribe. Gaddafi received his early education in Libya and later studied engineering in Egypt. After completing his studies, he joined the Libyan military and quickly rose through the ranks. In 1969, at the age of 27, he led a group of young military officers in a successful coup against the Libyan monarchy and became the country's de facto leader. After taking power, he repealed the Libyan Constitution of 1951, which he saw as a neo-colonial document, from 1969 to 1975. Living standards, life expectancy, and literacy increased rapidly. He released his manifesto of the Green Book in 1975. He formally stepped down from power in 1977 and later claimed to be merely a symbolic figurehead until 2011, with the Libyan government also denying that he held any power until then. Libya was theoretically a decentralized, direct democracy state run according to Gaddafi's The Green Book philosophy, with Gaddafi retaining a ceremonial position. Libya was officially run by a system of people's committees that served as local governments for the country's subdivisions, an indirectly elected General People's Congress as the legislature, and the General People's Committee as the executive branch, led by a secretary general. However, according to Freedom House, these structures were frequently manipulated to ensure Gaddafi's dominance, who reportedly continued to dominate all aspects of government. Gaddafi implemented a number of radical reforms in Libya, including the nationalization of the country's oil industry and the distribution of wealth to the general population. He also implemented policies to improve the lives of women and minorities in the country. Gaddafi implemented a number of policies and initiatives that he believed would benefit the people of Libya and the country as a whole. Here are some of the successes that can be attributed to his leadership. 1. Economic Development Under Gaddafi's leadership, Libya experienced significant economic development. He implemented a number of policies to increase oil production and exports which helped to boost the country's economy. In addition, he invested in infrastructure projects, such as building roads, hospitals, and schools. As a result, Libya's GDP per capita increased significantly during his time in power. 2. Improved living standards As a result of the economic development that occurred under Gaddafi's leadership, the standard of living for many Libyans also improved. He implemented a number of social welfare programs, such as free health care and education, which helped to improve the lives of ordinary citizens. 3. Political Stability Gaddafi was able to maintain political stability in Libya for many years. During his time in power, there were no significant uprisings or revolutions, and the country was largely peaceful. 4. International Relations 
Gaddafi was also able to improve Libya's relations with other countries during his time in power. He was instrumental in establishing the African Union, and he worked to improve relations with Europe and the United States. 5. Cultural Initiatives Gaddafi was a strong supporter of cultural initiatives and was instrumental in promoting Libyan culture both nationally and internationally. He supported the arts, including music and literature, and encouraged the preservation of traditional customs and practices. As a pan-Africanist, Gaddafi believed in the unity and liberation of African nations and worked to promote this goal throughout his career. He was a strong proponent of the African Union and worked to bring together African nations through the organization. He also supported the formation of the United States of Africa, a proposed federal state that would unite all of the African nations under one government. Gaddafi was also an advocate for the liberation of African countries from colonial rule. He provided financial and military support to anti-colonial movements throughout the continent and worked to free African nations from the grip of European powers. Libya's population had a per capita income of $14,000 by the end of Gaddafi's 42-year rule, though a third was estimated to still live below the national poverty line. A more or less secular society was imposed, child marriage was outlawed, and women's pay for equal work, divorce rights, and access to higher education increased from 8% in 1966 to 43% in 1996, matching that of men. Literacy rates were estimated at 88%, and average life expectancy increased from 54 in 1969 to 77 in 1977. The state's income was largely derived from its oil production, which peaked in the 1970s. In the 1980s, a large portion of it was spent on purchasing weapons and supporting militant groups and independence movements all over the world. Libya's economy was built primarily around the country's energy sector, which generated approximately 95% of export earnings, 80% of GDP, and 99% of government revenue in the 2000s. Libya is an OPEC member and one of the world's leading oil producers. Before the war, it was producing approximately 1.6 million barrels per day, nearly 70% of which were through the state-owned National Oil Corporation. Furthermore, the Libyan Investment Authority, the country's sovereign wealth fund, was one of the largest in the world, controlling assets worth approximately $56 billion, including over 100 tons of gold reserves in the Central Bank of Libya. So, with all this success, you'd think it'd be impossible for Gaddafi to eventually become unpopular, but as the old saying goes, you either die a hero or live long enough to become the villain, and that couldn't be more spot on for Gaddafi. One of the main reasons for the decline in Gaddafi's popularity was the widespread corruption and abuse of power that characterized his regime. Many people felt that Gaddafi and his family were using their positions of power to enrich themselves at the expense of the rest of the country. This led to widespread resentment and discontent among the population, particularly among young people who saw little hope for their future under Gaddafi's rule. Another factor that contributed to the decline in Gaddafi's popularity was his increasingly erratic and authoritarian behavior. He was known for making bizarre and inflammatory statements and for using violence and intimidation to suppress dissent. This further alienated many people who saw him as a dictator who was out of touch with the needs and concerns of the population. As the years went on, opposition to Gaddafi's rule grew, and protests began to break out across the country. In 2011, a full-scale revolution erupted, with protesters taking to the streets and demanding an end to Gaddafi's rule. The conflict began when pro-democracy protests erupted in the city of Benghazi, inspired by the Arab Spring uprisings that had toppled authoritarian governments in Tunisia and Egypt. The protests quickly spread to other parts of the country and were met with a violent crackdown by Gaddafi's security forces. As the protests continued, some Libyan military personnel defected to the opposition 
and began fighting against government forces. The conflict soon escalated into a full-scale civil war, with both sides using heavy weapons and employing various tactics, including airstrikes and the use of mercenaries. The fighting was particularly intense in the cities of Misrata and Benghazi, as well as in the Nafusa Mountains, where opposition forces were based. The conflict also saw the involvement of foreign powers, with NATO launching a campaign of airstrikes against government forces in support of the opposition. On February 26 of 2011, the United Nations Security Council passed an initial resolution freezing Gaddafi's assets and restricting his travel, and referring the case to the International Criminal Court for investigation. Gaddafi's forces rallied in early March, pushed eastward, and retook several coastal cities before reaching Benghazi. Another UN resolution authorized member states to establish and enforce a no-fly zone over Libya, as well as to use all necessary measures to prevent attacks on civilians, which resulted in a NATO bombing campaign against Libyan military installations and vehicles. The Gaddafi regime then declared a ceasefire, but the fighting and bombing continued. Throughout the conflict, rebels rejected government offers of a ceasefire and African Union efforts to end the fighting because the plans presented did not include Gaddafi's removal. In August, rebel forces launched an offensive on Libya's government-held coast, backed by a massive NATO bombing campaign, reclaiming territory lost months before and eventually capturing Tripoli. While Gaddafi evaded capture and loyalists engaged in a rearguard campaign, the United Nations recognized the National Transitional Council as Libya's legal representative on September 16, 2011, replacing the Gaddafi government. Despite a brutal crackdown by government forces, the revolution continued to spread, and eventually Gaddafi was forced to flee the capital. He was eventually captured and killed by rebel forces, bringing an end to his rule and the start of a new era in Libya's history. After the fall of the Gaddafi regime, a transitional government was established to oversee the transition to democracy. However, this process was fraught with challenges, including the lack of a cohesive national identity, the absence of a strong and centralized government, and the presence of numerous rival militias and political factions. In 2014, the country descended into civil war, with two rival governments vying for control. The internationally recognized government of national accord was based in the capital city of Tripoli, while the Libyan National Army controlled much of the east of the country. The conflict was further complicated by the involvement of various foreign powers, including Turkey and Russia, which provided military and logistical support to the GNA and the United Arab Emirates, Egypt, and France, which supported the LNA. In recent years, there have been some efforts to bring about a political settlement to the conflict. In 2015, the UN brokered the Libyan political agreement which established the GNA as the country's interim government and called for the establishment of a presidential council and a state council. However, the agreement has faced significant challenges, including a lack of support from key political and military actors and the continued existence of rival governments and militias. In addition to the ongoing conflict, Libya has also faced other challenges to its governance, including corruption, economic instability, and the proliferation of armed groups. The country has one of the highest levels of corruption in the world, with high levels of cronyism and nepotism. The economy has been severely impacted by the ongoing conflict, with a decline in oil production and a lack of investment in other sectors. To conclude, getting rid of Gaddafi probably did more harm to Libya than good. As governance in Libya post Gaddafi has been marked by ongoing conflict, political polarization, and the proliferation of armed groups. Despite some efforts to bring about a political settlement, the country continues to face significant challenges to its stability and effectiveness. But what do you guys think? Was getting rid of Gaddafi worth destroying the political structure of the country, or was it all a huge regrettable mistake? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. As usual, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss a video from us and see you in the next one.